Uh, so I'm Chris Saunders. Uh, I'm a software developer, and in my spare time, I'm a home brewer. I'm going to be talking about the uh, brewing process. Uh, I do all grain brewing, so I'm going to talk about grain to glass, grain to, yeah, okay. Um, so that's just taking the raw materials and turning them into beer. First, uh, one of the things we're going to talk about, I'm just going to cover the ingredients. First is hops. These play the role of adding the, uh, adding the preservatives and also adding the bitterness to the beer. Without that, our beer would have really sw uh, cloying sweetness to it and kind of makes it undesirable. Secondly, uh, malt. So depending on the, the, uh, the way it's been kilned, uh, you'll get really dark malts, which add a lot of flavor to it. Or if you have the really lightly uh, roasted malts, you'll get a lot of sugar, which actually gives the ingredients we need, or the sugars we need for the yeast to do their job. These are the actual workers. Um, brewers, like they do a bit, but without the yeast, they're actually nothing. Um, so these guys actually create the alcohol that creates the beer we love and enjoy. But uh, without uh, water, it, uh, we wouldn't have our beer. And also a cool thing about water is water chemistry plays a really important role. Depending on the location of the water, such as water in Burton versus water in Cologne, you'll actually get a drastically different beer, even if you made the exact same kind, because of the uh, contents of the water. So we're all thinking, yo, cool, that's really good. Um, this is all it takes to make my beer. I'm good. I'm going to go out and be an awesome home brewer. But there's a little bit more to it. I'm going to talk about the process that's involved in uh, going from that grain to the actual final product. The first off is the grind. So this is taking those grains and grinding them up and exposing the insides of them, which contain the starches that we need to uh, actually convert into sugar. One thing we really need to be careful with, though, is that there's, uh, the, if the grind is too fine, we will start extracting tannins. If you've ever had tea that's been steeped for too long, you'll get that really, uh, really puckery taste. Um, also, some wines have that flavor, and it results in a really undesirable desirable flavor, especially in beer. We've got that ground up, throw in some hot water. This is called the mash. So we're creating a, um, like a, a malt tea. This is the, uh, where the actual enzymatic action kicks in to create that beer, uh, or to create that sugary substance. What we have to be really careful with here is we need to be between 65 and 68 degrees Celsius. If we're below that, we won't get the, uh, the enzymatic, the enzymes won't kick in. And above that, we'll actually cancel the action, which uh, has an effect on our efficiency. So you end up wasting a lot of that grain and not getting what you need. Next up is um, the watering. This is where we throw in a bunch of hot water because uh, unfortunately during that process, the, the sugars don't, uh, like they start to stick to the grain. And we need to rinse those off to actually get the wort we need that we will use in the boil. This is where we go in and add our hops. So depending on when you add them, it adds the uh, various aspects. Earlier on in the boil, uh, when we add them, we will uh, get more of a, the bitterness extraction, those are also known as alpha acids. So those add the, the bitterness that we know, they also provide the uh, preservatives that help make our beer uh, keep, it, uh, keep it from going bad, uh, also provides it with a bit of resilience versus, uh, versus bacteria and stuff like that. Secondly, if we add them later in the boil, we get the aroma and flavor. Uh, often if you've ever had anything like uh, dogfish IPAs or something like that, uh, that goes through the entire boil and most of the aroma and flavor is due to the later additions. Those will add those resiny flavors and uh, that smell that we all love and enjoy. Now we're in the transfer, so we need to cool that beer down really quickly to uh, provide a good environment for our uh, yeast to grow in. And also uh, we need to do a few things while we're going on. One thing we have to be really careful with is sanitation. This is the best place where things go wrong. If you aren't careful, you'll end up introducing foreign bodies such as bacteria or um, external yeast. Those can end up ruining the beer, end up uh, adding a acetobatter batter and stuff like that. Also, oxygenation. Because of the boil, we've ended up uh, removing all that oxygen from it. We need to reintroduce the oxygen, otherwise the yeast won't have a positive environment to grow in. So we go in, uh, this can be done by either agitating or whatever. Then we ferment the beer. This is where the yeast actually do their job. This is where the actual process of creating that beer happens. It can happen anywhere between six days to six months, depending on the style. And once that's done, we end up with our finished product, which is the lovely beer. Uh, depending on how you bottle it, you, you can drink it right away. It's generally undesirable. Uh, you can bottle it, keg it, whatever. And you, then you have your finished product. And that's really all I have to say. I am Chris Sonny's. And I blog about this occasionally on uh, my blog, where I also did a little bit of an Arduino project that uh, was there to keep track of some stuff. <laughs>